All right, guys, so I'm just looking through this book here. There's a section called Paleo-Indian Settlement Pattern, just a stro stone's throw from the lithic source, Roger Muller. And I'm reading in uh, Ice Age Peoples of Pennsylvania. And I'm just, uh, I'm in my car again. I'm in the hunting area here, waiting for dusk. Let's see if I can get some small game. But uh, I figured I would just read through this a little bit and uh, show you some of the artifacts found. They actually found a uh, Onondaga chert in Pennsylvania, and they said there's outcrops down there. So what the heck? I'm going to have to check that out. Specific quarry and cobble sources for lithics from prehistoric sites of all periods, but especially for Paleo-Indian, have long been discussed in an archaeological literature. Too many of these discuss discussions have been cited, believed, and repeated without ever being critically evaluated in the light of new data and new theories. Since the classic references are approaching middle age, the time has come for a basic lesson in geology and local reality. Since I, o since I know only what Philip Laporta has told of the forma, former, I will focus on the latter. Ignore the stereotypes, admit that archaeologists do not know as much as the lithic about lithic sources as geologists, and think like a substance hunter-gatherer. I doubt that this short presentation will solve any problems, but it will provide better questions when one is looking for a solution. First, eliminate the truly impossible. The answers must be among the remaining alternatives, no matter how unlikely they seem. And he just goes over lithic sources here. Distance, distance from the lithic source can be estimated by the amount of debitage. More debitage means you are closer to the source. Cyclical, cyclical camp movements show a decreasing amount of debitage as the distance from source increases. Lithic type of imported biface material does not match the debitage from local sources. Multi-purpose tools, paleo-Swiss army knives, are more likely to be made when raw material is in short supply. Interesting. Read all of this. He goes over some of the sites and stuff that was found. Here it says, uh, reports in the past few years, a source close to Shoop for Onondaga-like chert has been found by William Topping in cobble beds. Proved to be premature and erroneous. So, I'm actually going to go, I am going to go, and look for Onondaga in that area in cobble beds. <clears throat> we'll see. So this is the guy that excavated uh, Templeton originally. The current person uh, investigating Templeton is uh, somebody I know. His name's uh, Zach Singer. And he's coming across some really interesting stuff. Lithic sourcing here, but I'm not seeing it. It looks like it's right at the end. So this is why uh, part of the reason I do what I do and I go and look for myself is uh, I have the time to put in the man hours to find this stuff. And these books give good hints. But there's never enough in here to... Uh, really pinpoint the spot right here. So fluted points made by ancient nappers looked more like that. And you could see how big it was. These are the kind of things I replicate. They don't really look like what modern nappers make. Here's some end scrapers, all made from Onondaga chert. So I'm very curious if that's the smelly stuff or if that's the, um, the really modeled, it looks like the really modeled blue and gray stuff that I find. But if you look at these points like that, there's one inch 
so you can see how big that point is. And the majority of these look fairly tiny with indirect fluting on them. Now some people would call that a thinning flake, but that's literally a flute, flute channel flake. And I could tell which ones were done with indirect or direct. That looks like it was some sort of a tree jig on this one. But you could say, like, they did the channel flake and then they resharpened the base. So, for people saying that the final, final, final thing was the flute, that's not always the case. I'm just looking at these real quick. And if you look at the points I replicate, and even some that I use on my arrows that are like this, I make them a little bit tinier, but uh, they have to be seven eighths of an inch wide to be legal. So it'd be about here, I don't know. Just take a look at some of the stuff being found. Give a good map. Here's more. This is a, uh, let's say, uh, all, all Onondaga, Chert of Unknown Source and Onondaga Chert. So again, uh, not incredibly huge points. These ones are a little bigger. And you can see that they're not incredibly fancy like you would see modern nappers make. Some of them are, like this one. But majority of them, not so much. These ones are really nice. I often wonder if these were knives. This one to me looks like it was probably a knife. I mean, this book has a lot of good, good information in it. Let me go, let me jump around a little bit and see what we got. The, the late Paleo-Indian period, uh, when you see nappers do that parallel flaking, that's from a relatively short time period that they did that. It all looks pretty good though. I really love these, uh, these types of books. Really um, gives you good insight into stuff. Is really, uh, really helpful if you want to learn more. Here's some more um, of the type of stuff that I replicate. I could always tell when an edge has been resharpened on these artifacts. You see those steep, deep flakes taken. A lot of these are specific sites, and I, I don't really feel like getting into specific sites. Unless, see, like this one, what I just went over, talks a little bit about specific sites, but that's not incredibly helpful. A lot of this is talking about their, uh, their hunting, ambush hunting, seasonal cycles, the development of new sources of natural foods. This here talks about uh, Paleo Indians must have used, must have been elephant hunters. So here in Connecticut, um, they recently found I think it was just a, a scraping tool had a 
elephant protein on it. That was at like a 12,000 year old site. So to say that they were hunting them, that's not a definitive, but they might have been, um, well, that's probably most likely that they were at least, at, at the very least, scavenging mammoths or mastodons.